So, in my life I've experienced clinginess and attachment and fear of leaving a relationship or just when I'm single, like some sort of like compulsive urge to get a girlfriend. And it came from my childhood because in my childhood I had a lot of fear and anxiety and apprehension and loneliness and insecurity of being, you know, it's like weak almost. Not weak isn't the proper word, like because it's from tra being traumatized. A lot of suffering when I was small, and I'm not the only one. I'm not pretending I am. So, in adults and adolescents, this leads us to be feeling like sort of weak, if you know what I mean. Like not a sense of power and strength and powerful independence. So as a result, we, we rush in relationships, and we rush into relationships with the wrong people, too. Um, if we were very p fulfilled and full and feeling strong and powerful and whole and rounded on our own, then we wouldn't need to jump into relationships. We wouldn't feel bad being single, and we definitely wouldn't want to jump into a relationship with the wrong person. So this is what happens with so many of us on Earth, okay? So where I am in my life right now is realizing the sense of perspective. For example, right now, being mindful, just my little body here, surrounded by a huge amount of mountains and beauty all around me and vast sky and space above me. And it's similar in relationships. They're just a little ounce of our life, a page. And life is an experience of coming and going, gain and loss. Everything and everybody, every experience comes and goes. And eventually we also have come and we will go back physically. And spiritually, we'll return, we'll go back again. We'll withdraw our consciousness from this avatar, this human body vehicle. So, in relationships, we also must, must realize the temporariness. So, where I am right now is a sense of just being non-attached and wanting to enjoy and to... Uh, Basically just to enjoy and to love and to share and to be shared with and to experience a positive relationship with somebody, okay? Uh, it's freeing to know that you may not be with the same person in another few years or less. And it's okay to also feel like that's okay. It's good to feel like that's okay. There's no sense of obligation or attachment if those things just don't work out to the satisfaction of one or both people. It's okay to let go and have a new experience. That said, we don't have to expect a breakup. We don't have to expect... Um, loss or change of a partnership, a relationship. Every day, every moment, our lives and all of our human relationships and our romantic relationships, we are creating and co-creating life. We're making it up as we go along. So if there's something in our life that's been here for a long time and we don't like it, ask ourselves why are we putting up with it and if you want to ask yourself another question ask yourself what is the block like what's blocking me what's keeping me here what am i afraid of what why am i stuck here like why am i afraid to let go so you, then you'll uncover your fears and your traumas and your insecurities and your attachments and addictions and everything else you get addicted to people also So, radical, blatant, beautiful, brutal, gorgeous honesty with ourselves and other people is pretty good.
to be honest. It's very freeing, especially with the right people. Um, we don't want to be too honest with psychopaths who can hurt us. You know, we don't want to be too close to, the, to these type of people. So there's a time to run away, and there's a time to also talk to people who are like fair, more fair and open to negotiate and to co-create with in life and in romantic relationships. So, in my life, I feel very free knowing that right now I'm in a relationship and it could end at any time and that's okay and then I'm free and available to live my life without that person. But at the same time, I'm also more than 100% free to really enjoy and to co-create a beautiful relationship with this person also as much as possible, getting better and better little by little, ups and downs and hiccups and, you know, a spiritual, a spiritual relationship isn't just about meeting each other's insecurities and playing a happy, friendly game of society where we all look happy on the outside and we meet each other's basic needs of, like, let's say, for example, sex, sexual connection or having a home and a house of security and food and things like that, a bed to sleep in. A more spiritual relationship is about honesty and not being afraid of each other and being able to show each other your unhealed parts and your, your weak points, so to speak, where you can help each other to grow and become your greatest versions. You know, some people might use the word mirroring. Um, you basically, like, the, the basic idea for mirroring for me really is like. When I act like bad, when I act bad using child language, bad, like disharmonious and problematic, triggered and overly sensitive and not nice, okay? When I act bad, other people get pissed off. Then they mirror back to me a bad attitude and unhappiness with me because I've just act, acted like an asshole maybe or insensitive or unthoughtful or, you know, not listening properly or various things that I not... the so whenever I'm not the best in something, the more not bad I am or not good at something I am, the more I upset people, the more they get upset with me, then the more they give me feedback that I'm doing something that isn't of a high caliber of maybe virtuous living. And then I get a chance to say, oh, oh, hey, look at that. You maybe want to change yourself there a little bit. So that's for, my, for me the basic idea of mirroring. So that's why I like intimate relationships, like close relationships give you the, the greatest chance of self-improvement. So a romantic relationship or living, living with people intensely, like where you have a close relationship, like your parents or maybe family. Strangers and living with house sharing isn't as intense because you don't have as much emotional attachment or connection. The more emotionally invested you are with somebody, the more you get upset with them and the more you can be like tell each other you're pissed off with each other and be cranky and show them your bad side with strangers we're less likely to show our bad side because then we just seem like complete assholes and then they'll give us bad gossip and generally we want to be liked and people like to be approved and accepted but when it comes to our family <laughs> we know kind of like we're always in a way probably going to be reasonably close to them because we're family and we feel like we almost have an excuse to like act act bad in a way, like be careless because they're always still gonna love us. Our parents are still gonna feed us if we're living with them and like if we're young especially. That type of idea, you know. Um, if the more we know people are addicted to us, the more we can treat them badly because they're still not gonna leave. Whereas strangers have no attachment or addiction to us and if we act bad they'll tell us they'll tell us and they'll give out and they'll complain and criticize and badmouth us in public and to society. But we generally are, it's different with romantic partners or close, intense family members. So I know I think it's good to get a mirror system and it's good to have, it's good to have people who can, who can, you can trigger and who you can get triggered by because it's the greatest opportunity for spiritual growth inner transformation and positive change. So, very nice here. 
So everybody, I hope we can all reach a place where we're not addicted to people. Because the more addicted we are to people, the more we're afraid of losing them. The more we're afraid of losing them, the more we want to control them and make them weak so they don't have the power to live. And that's when we'll also lie to them, deceive them and trick them. So it's sad sometimes, abuse, but at the same time, we have the choice to leave. So if you're in an abusive relationship, get help and support. If you're in a semi-abusive relationship, which a lot of us can be in, to be honest, we have to not just play the victim and realize how we're triggering and annoying and pissing off our partners or being mean or unthoughtful or not nice in how we talk to them or treat them or put them down or make them feel bad about themselves or guilty or ashamed. All of this little talk and our body language or raising our voice, all sorts of behavior we, are, we can be, have to be accountable for too. It's only the rare like psychopathic behaviors where we're basically just really bad victims. But otherwise, we have a lot of contribution to a relationship, why it's bad or why we seem like we're being victimized. We're just probably victimizing them and they're probably in a lot of pain and suffering too. So I really highly encourage you to clean up your act, heal yourself, clean up your energy and vibration, clean up your heart and mind, get help and healing and I'll end the video on that saying that I also offer one to one healing with me below in the description box. It's my passionate work to help humanity and to help people relationships, lives, communities and the world and it's my passionate work and if I can be of any help please contact me, send me a personal message, befriend me on Facebook, get some healing or coaching from me and um, if you've liked this video please give it a like, it really helps the channel and please share the video to help spread the word, help people, help, help the world and do your part also and um, the world will be so much better place, glowing, be so bright, be so nice, full of flowers and there's so much beauty in the world everyone, we're all in this boat together, we're all doing our best, nobody's alone, we're all making mistakes together, we're all just human beings trying to hold each other's hand almost, so reach out and connect with nature, go for a walk, breathe, be grateful and loving and kind. You're not alone. Thanks everybody. Have a beautiful day. Have a nice day, a nice moment. See you again next video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. See you again everybody. That's corn. There's loads of uh, lettuce over there. There's um, baby spinach growing. There's two different types of beets. Everything is heirloom variety. More lettuce, parsley, parsley, basil. Loads of stuff. Then there's lots of herbs over there, marjoram, oregano, thyme, there's calendula over there, there's loads of kale, there's sweet peppers, okra, <laughs> then there's loads of wild greens. Every day do a wild green smoothie, it's so good for you, so good to look after your health. Raw veganism or raw food to everybody, highly recommend it. Even just more, it doesn't have to be all, just more to really help your mind and heart, clear up your energy and mind and heart. Okay, have a great day everyone, bye.